How's it going Eliminators? Today I'm going to be showing you how to clean just about any Honda GX style carburetor. So let's get right into it. So I'm working on a generator here and this is basically a Honda clone engine. They call them Klondas. It basically uses the GX style engine design. So you're going to have a carburetor and it's going to be mounted on two studs. Normally there will be some type of air box with two nuts. Loosen the nuts off. Move your throttle from this position here. Pop up your throttle cable as well as your spring. Disconnect your fuel line and you should be able to slide the carburetor right off. Now you could drain the bowl of your carburetor on your machine. You're gonna to wanna to loosen this off here. Sometimes you're gonna have a petcock or fuel valve built directly onto the carburetor itself, at which point you can just shut that off and then go ahead and drain this. On this model, it has its own fuel valve up on the fuel tank. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the bowl using a 10 millimeter wrench, just take that off. Now, if you find yourself in a position where you just cannot remove the bolt that holds your bowl into position, I like to use a woodworking vise because it has soft jaws and it won't damage the carburetor and then that allows me to come in here with the 10 millimeter wrench and pop that loose. Okay now once we get the bowl off you'll be able to have a look and see kind of the stuff that's inside of your sediment bowl. All of that gunk in there goes to the bottom and that's a good indication of what's going to be in your main jet. We can see that there is some discoloration here a little bit of gunk and that main jet right in there you can see there's a slot that's a brass jet and we're going to take a standard screwdriver and we're going to remove that. Okay now I have a screwdriver here that I've actually taken to the bench grinder just to grind off the edges here and this screwdriver fits perfectly inside of most of the pickup tubes to get the main jet out and once you get that loose just go ahead and give it a little tap here and the main jet which is right here should fall right out and the distribution tube should fall out after it that's how it goes back in to the carburetor because this little piece actually sits up inside of your carburetor. Now the main issue that my customer was having was that this machine essentially would run perfectly. He put some fresh fuel into it, fired it up. He said it would idle, but once he plugged something in and put it under a load, because that's when the actual electric generator kicks in, he said it would start to sputter. On these Honda or Kohlers use these a lot. Essentially they have uh, two different jets. They have a slow idle speed jet, which is this black piece right here. I literally just did a video on how to fix surging on one of these carburetors by enlarging the hole in this little idle jet. You guys can uh, check that video out in the top right of your screen now. But essentially how this works is there's a little jet here and it pulls fuel through that when the engine is idling, when there is zero load on your engine. As soon as you engage the governor or let's say it's on a mini bike, you get on the throttle, you're putting a load of some kind on the engine, it will start to pull fuel through the main jet. Now these holes here are where your fuel goes through your main tube there because we have to remember that your bowl of your carburetor is going to have that bolt in it and that bolt goes right inside of here so your fuel gets pulled through here these little holes into this tube which then go through your main jet so here's our main jet here. Now, if we have a look, normally the issue is uh, there's a little bit of clogging in there and there could be a little bit of gunk in there. There's not that much gunk in there. So this looks clean. Now, moving on to the distribution tube or the emulsion tube. This is what basically turns your fuel from a liquid into more of a mist. And then it mixes the air with the fuel and puts it into your engine as an air fuel mixture. So a lot of times if your engine runs rough, you're gonna have your distribution tube clogged up. So some of these holes here are gonna be clogged up, which is gonna be preventing your carburetor from actually converting that fuel into a mist and that's gonna cause some issues. Okay, next up, we're gonna be removing the throttle backstop with a normal Phillips screwdriver here. And once you get that out, take a screwdriver or sometimes I like to take a small pair of needle nose pliers and put each tip on either side of that jet and then all you're gonna do is pry it up. I had it loose, so it just popped out. Now we can see that uh, there is some dirt and nasty stuff coming off of this, but what we're interested in is this hole right here. A lot of times this hole clogs up and will cause your engine to surge. It'll sound a little something like this. Now, like I said in my previous video, if you've had a carburetor that's been clean, or let's say it's a brand new one, because sometimes these come from the factory with a surging issue. I know it sounds crazy, but 
they do. Basically what you're going to do is just pop this out and take a micro drill bit and you're going to start to drill this bigger. And if you want to see how I did that, you guys can uh, check out the video. But that looks fairly clean and I'm going to make sure that hole is clear using a little tool we made. So this right here is just a little piece of wooden dowel with a wire from a steel brush. So a wire brush because on the wire brushes, these pieces here are hardened steel so they won't bend that easily. Basically what we did is we just pushed it down into the dowel and sometimes you can take a little dab a glue in there as well but essentially what we're going to do is we're going to use this and put it through that little brass jet in there sometimes it's just a plastic hole and we're going to make sure that it's clear now what you're going to want to look for is that right there you want to make sure that wire is going all the way through now if you can't make one of these tools you can go and get a twist tie something that a lot of people would have in their kitchen or a junk drawer tear off the paper or plastic on the outside and you can actually use the center metal piece and that should be small enough to go through that hole but we can see that that's clear so we know that that is not the issue okay next up we're gonna be pulling the rod that holds your float on sometimes they're gonna have a stamped end that's a little thicker so you're gonna to want to just look for that this one doesn't so we can pop it out either side now when I went to remove the rod that was holding my float in it was actually seized in there and I couldn't get it out just by uh, rotating it with a pair of needle nose pliers there so if you guys want to see how I removed that rod using this tool right here click in the top right of your screen and it'll take you to the video where I show you how to do that it's a nice little tip for for you guys if you're ever working on small engines and encounter this problem. Moving on, now that we have the rod removed from our float, we can lift our float up and take our needle valve off as well. Now on this design of carburetor, your needle valve runs on a little spring there so that every time you hit a bump, that needle valve stays in the closed position. And then as soon as your engine drains the float bowl, and your float drops down, it fills it back up and closes that needle valve again. Now, there isn't much to clean on these machines. There are these Welch plugs here, and normally you don't have to remove them just to uh, get a decent carb clean on. Some of your carburetors are also gonna have a little hole here, and sometimes it'll be threaded, sometimes it'll be plugged, or it just won't even be machined, but sometimes you're gonna have a little screw that goes in here, and that's gonna be your air fuel mixture screw. So you're gonna have a tiny little hole, which this one has as well, but this is known as a fixed air fuel mixture screw. So if it does have a screw, it's gonna be an adjustable type. I have one here. So a lot of times they're gonna have some kind of safety or anti-tamper device, which is essentially a plastic cap that goes onto it. You can pop that off and a lot of times you'll be able to thread that in or out to change your air fuel mixture. You're just gonna screw that in and count the number of turns that it goes in. And then you'll know once you thread it all the way in, how many turns out it needs to get it back to the setting that it was. But essentially there's a little hole there and you guys you're just going to want to back that out as much as possible and make sure that hole, which is right there, is clean and free of debris. Apart from that, you're going to have the little area here where your idle jet goes, and there's going to be a hole down there, and there's going to be a hole on this side as well. You're going to want to go in with some carburetor cleaner, and I have some Gumout small engine carb and choke cleaner. Shout out to Permatex for sending that my way. But you guys are going to want to get the carburetor as clean as possible. And because this is compressed, you can take the tip of that, put it into one of those holes, and use it to kind of force any gunk that may be in there out because you don't want any in there. You're also going to have these little pickup tubes here. Some of these pull air through, some of them pull fuel through. It all depends on what kind of carburetor it is, but you're going to want to take your tube of carburetor cleaner, stick it down in these holes and spray them down in there as well. Now would also be a good time to go and clean your main fuel inlet, which is right here, that little brass piece, and then also spray inside where your main jet is. But if you can't get that main jet out, that means you're not gonna be able to get your distribution tube out. So you could have a main jet that's clear and a distribution tube that's completely clogged up. And at which point you might have a carburetor that you think is clean, but if you can't get that out and make sure that it's absolutely clean and free of debris, then you could run into an issue where your engine doesn't run at its peak performance. Now I should note that I don't always use carburetor cleaner. I clean carburetors professionally using an ultrasonic cleaner. So once I get my carburetor disassembled like I have it here, I have a little basket. I drop my carburetor into it. I put the bowl inside of here as well. And then I have a little aluminum bowl that I took off of a scrap carburetor. And I'm gonna put all my tiny little jets and tubes and anything small that I wanna get clean. I'm gonna drop that into the bowl and drop the bowl into my basket. Now this is my six liter ultrasonic cleaner here. I'm gonna take my basket and drop it into my ultrasonic cleaner. I have three liters of cool room temperature 
temperature water and three liters of water that's been run in the kettle just before the point of boiling. Then I'm gonna be using some Indo 701. You guys can see it's an industrial detergent that's concentrated. So essentially this is just a concentrated degreaser. This ultrasonic cleaner uses ultrasonic vibrations and that'll break up any gunk in this carburetor and they come out perfectly clean. So I'm just gonna drop that in until it's fully submerged. Turn on my ultrasonic cleaner. Now it also has a heater, but I do not use the heater. I just run it for approximately five minutes. And when I turn this on, you guys are gonna hear a nasty audio noise because it is an ultrasonic cleaner that emits ultrasonic frequencies. So it does distort the audio. And it sounds a little something like this. So if I cut the audio from that because it's hard on the ears, you guys can see that it's starting to clean up this carburetor and all the sediment is coming up from that carburetor. And like I said, this is the ultimate way to clean your carburetors. This one here cost me about $265 and it has paid for itself time and time again. So I'm gonna let this run and I'll bring you back when it's finished. Okay, so I got my carburetor out of the ultrasonic cleaner and it may not look like there's a lot of gunk in this fluid, but normally after you let it sit for a few hours and everything settles, it should look a little something like this where there's all sorts of dirt and debris at the bottom bottom of this ultrasonic cleaner. But we can see right away that uh, that ultrasonic cleaner has cleaned up all that corrosion around the uh, main pickup tube. So I'm just gonna use my compressor and I'm just gonna blow this dry, making sure that every single little hole on this carburetor is clean and free of debris. And I'm also gonna do that for my distribution tube and my main jet and any other little tiny parts. Now I can't stress enough the importance of having a clean workspace when you're putting a carburetor that's been cleaned back together. You guys are gonna wanna make sure that you lay down a nice clean cloth or shop towel like I have. You wanna make sure that you don't get a piece of dirt that could be somewhere on your bench because you gotta remember that a carburetor has all these tiny little holes. Now going back to that, I'm gonna show you another step that you can do. Now what I have in front of me here is what's known as an oxyacetylene tip cleaner. Now if you're not careful, you can actually do a little bit of damage to your components such as your main jet because an oxyacetylene tip cleaner you guys can see has these little ridges this can actually act as a file and you'll be taking material away from your jet which will be enlarging your hole which will in turn richen your fuel mixture which you don't want to do so you want to be careful but basically these come in different sizes and you can go ahead and use those different size tips to push through and make sure that all of your holes in your carburetor are clean and free of debris. This is gonna be a good point to mention your needle valve right here. These on the Honda and Kohler carburetors, they have a rubber tip and what'll happen is that will actually over time deform this rubber. So when you have your fuel valve on, this won't be making a seal. So if you have a leaky carburetor when your fuel valve is open, what you'll end up having is fuel leaking past that. So you're gonna to wanna to replace that if that's the case. But because this carburetor didn't leak, it was just an issue that this machine wasn't running as smooth as my customer would like it, then I know this is okay, but I can go ahead and do an extra test on this. Now I have in front of me what's known as a carburetor pressure tester, and essentially it just tells me if that needle valve needs to be replaced or not. If you wanna see more on how I pressure test carbs, I mean, it's fairly simple, but you can click on the top right. I'll link you to a video that I did on how to pressure test a carburetor. Now, if you don't have one of those carburetor pressure testers, what you can do is just go ahead and with your carburetor in this position, just go ahead and blow on your fuel inlet. So we can tell that that carburetor seals up. That's just a little trick you can do. You can go ahead and insert your distribution tube towards the inside of the carburetor. That's gonna fit right in down there. Just slide that into position and then go ahead and take your main jet, put it slot side up and we're just gonna slip that right in there and tighten it up. Now be careful when you're screwing the main jet into the carburetor because you have to remember that the jet is made of brass and the carburetor is made of aluminum. So they're both soft metals. You can end up stripping the threads super easy. So again, you wanna make sure that it's tight and snug, but don't over tighten it. Now, once you have your float installed, you can move on to your bowl. You guys can see that this bowl here is quite pitted and we can see that someone's taken a screwdriver because it's all scratched to try to remove some of that gunk. Now I have replacement bowls, but the big thing that you guys are gonna to wanna 
want to take note of. These carburetor bowls, if they're steel, they have a special coating on them. And a lot of times that coating is going to be gold in color. Ethanol is a grain alcohol and alcohol attracts water. This will rust and corrode. And what you'll have is essentially a bunch of rust in the bottom of your carburetor. And when you go to put this back on, some of that rust over time can get into your main jet. I've seen it happen before. So I can go ahead and replace this bowl. Or if you were in a pinch and you didn't want to replace the bowl, go in there with a wire wheel and clean that up. Now is a good time to go ahead and inspect your bowl gasket as well. This one looks perfect. There's no cracks in it, so I'm not going to replace it. Once you have your bowl installed, we can go ahead and take our low speed idle jet and pop that back into the slot. Just take a second to do a quick inspection because there are two little o-rings on here you want to make sure they're in good condition you also want to make sure that it's pushed all the way down and I can actually see that I'm about an eighth of an inch high so I'm going to show you a little trick that I do you can actually come in here with a set of channel lock pliers you don't want to squeeze too hard just squeeze enough to the point where it pushes that plastic jet down until it's flush and that's all we needed. There's also a locating tab on the top, so make sure that it's lined up just like that before you push it down because you don't want to damage this. Then we can go ahead and install our throttle positioning screw. You're going to want to screw this all the way in and then unthread it approximately five and a half turns. Now you should be able to screw this in perfectly straight without any problems. If you find yourself going in on an angle, then your jet is probably mounted slightly too high. So again, you want to make sure you're flush and you have to remember that those are plastic threads going into aluminum. So make sure you don't cross thread it. What you want to do is just make sure that your butterfly valve is covering half of that first hole right there. And that should be approximately five and a half turns. So again, just have it in that position. And now's a great time to make sure that your throttle butterfly valve also opens and closes without any binding. If you find anything is binding though, I would recommend taking a little bit of three in one oil and lubricating your posts up top. Now, if you do have an air fuel mixture screw on your carburetor, normally they're anywhere from one and a half to two and three quarters, but it definitely varies depending on what manufacturer makes the carburetor. But you're now ready to reinstall your carburetor back onto your machine, a push lawnmower, a riding lawnmower, a generator, maybe it's a Honda engine on a mini bike or a go-kart. So once I get this thing installed, I'll fire it up and let you guys hear what it sounds like. But that's how you guys clean a Kohler or Honda GX model carburetor. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Fire it up first pull. So I'm just gonna let it run, warm up, and then we'll put it under a load. So you heard for yourself that thing ran great not only on idle but also when we put it under a load. I used the combination of a couple 120 volt angle grinders and I also hooked up a snowblower with the throttle and kill switch off. I ended up running the electric starter to really put the generator under a load and that thing worked awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by, check the channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.